dear Truro friends. Thanks for inviting me into your digital homesteads. Oh, how I'd love to be with you, enjoying once again the warmth and generosity of hearts and minds I already have enjoyed on so many previous occasions. Last time I was with you in connection with your august enthronement, Bishop Philip, I came, came uh, geared up with alb and cope and mitre, but no dog collar. Dean Roger kindly provided me with one of his, having seen my haphazardly constructed emergency color, may, color made out of place cards from the Alverton Hotel in Truro. It is thus with particular pleasure that I today greet you in a more orderly manner. One wouldn't want you to remember the Diocese of Strengness as the Diocese of Strangeness. But now to something completely different. In Romans chapter 12 we read, Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil, cling to what is good, be devoted to one another in love, honor one another above yourselves, never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor, serving the Lord, be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer, share with the Lord's people who are in need, practice hospitality. I am against optimism. Well, perhaps not against it, but I'm rather for it. I like optimistic people and uh, my personal outlook on life is uh, pretty solidly optimistic. But once that is said, a bit of self-examination self is in place because optimism doesn't always deliver. On the contrary, it rather tends to fail at, f at the first hurdle when faced with opposing headwind. Optimism tends to work deductively, pinpointing a positive fact, development, point of departure, and then, so to say, take a pencil and draw an upward pointing curve from that point towards the stars. Concluding, now this is where we are and this is where we'll be if everything delivers on expectations. Great strategy when it works. Less great when it doesn't. Less great right now in Covid time, in headwind time. We optimistically predict, well, here is where we are in a dark place, but more than 150 different coronavirus vaccines are in development across the world. They'll soon dig us out of this hole and then, then all will be as before, only probably better. We will meet more often than ever, in more pubs and restaurants than ever, on our way to more concerts and cinemas than ever, from having visited more old people's homes and community centers than ever, and finding that more people than for decades, no, centuries, will make their way to our churches, starved of solid, tried and tested spiritual food, enthusiastically join our services, where they join the choir, arrange our flowers, and pay for the new lead roof. We might even say it was almost worth it. Covid-19 that is, almost. And why not? This is a possibility as good as any. And yet it might not become 100% like that. It might be, well, not even a tiny percentage like that. And what will that do to us, to our positive outlook? Will we lose the slight energy we've got left? 
Will we say that the pandemic killed off the little hope there was? Will we still keep calm but hardly carry on? Will we reach for our pens and draw a downward pointing curve in assured expectation of the next disaster? Deducting as always. If so, let's change track. Let's be less optimistic and more promise finding. Move away from predictions and zoom in on the promises, his promises, the promises, promises that he, that Jesus uh, says that he remains with us throughout, despite, never forsaking, by our side, irrespective of in which direction the curve happens to point. To live with trust in an unpredictable world, even see unpredictability as predictable and focus on being a promise finder, a person who keeps mind and eyes open for Jesus in everyday life, uncertain as to how, certain as to who. You probably already heard all the best quarantine jokes, such as the one about the husband and wife. She saying, my husband purchased a world map and then gave me a dart and said, darling, throw this and wherever it lands, that's where I'm taking you when this pandemic ends. Turns out we're spending two weeks behind the fridge. That's trust despite the unexpected for you. God bless you all from all of us.